Church down there, um, downtown, uh, had a lot of um, teen dances. The most notable one was St. Patrick's in, uh, in, in Urbana, St. Pat's dances. And they had like the Tigers down there, and somehow it was, uh, uh, it was sep there wasn't a separation of church and state. They had to, uh, the Urbana High School kids used that place, and that was a cool event. We were playing there once, and Troy Donahue oh, yeah. showed up. He had a movie, the movie actor, you know, and they were, he, for some reason, was on a tour and went around and he stopped at the cinema in Urbana, you know, and he popped in to, to the Tiger's Den. You know? On Saturday mornings, they would have, that's the first time I ever saw Guy Maynard and the Seeds of Doubt and the Regiment and all those other bands. Which they were still for teenagers because it was a bar. But, oh, it, but on Saturday mornings, they opened it up to kids. Oh, oh, oh. Panama Rudds was another uh, bar on Green Street, right by the underpass. And I saw, you know, incredible bands there from country rock bands. Appaloosa was a great band. I remember a band called Sidewinder, a really good blues band. You used to see Cole Kitchen play there. <clears throat> Elvis Brothers later on, all kinds of bands. And uh, I saw Sun Ra there, which is uh, mind boggling. Well, one of the al other alternatives to Panama Reds right down there on Green Street. Green Street used to just be the strip that was happening because it was close to campus, but all the townies would hang out there too. And so you had Panama Reds right on Green Street, and right across the street, tucked back in the alley, was the Alley Cat. And I played that club off and on for 20 years, either in a blues band or acoustically. And even the little old Alley Cat brought in people like Mighty Joe Young and Luther Allison and Sun Seals and groups that were big in Chicago, you know, and big nationally on the blues scene, would have groups at the Alley Cat. There was a place called Ruby Gulch on Green Street, and I would sneak in there too to see all kinds of different bands. I think the Birds played there at one point, and uh, just see all kinds of different groups and hippie bands. Yeah. And that was a cool place. They had jazz in there. They'd have uh, George Benson and McCoy Tyner, a jazz piano player, and Harvey Mandel and Pure Food and Drug Act played there. He had Sugar Cane Harris on violin and all kinds of cool jazz type and jazz rock and fusion groups played there. And then there was a club called Mabel's that I actually ended up being half owner with my brother Paul. And um, that Mabel's was for many years the live music venue. It had a big stage and a nice PA system and and it was a kind of great place for local and semi-national band. Well, I remember looking at a list of people that played Mabel's and Bruce Springsteen was on there and a bunch of other people that had played there trying to make it before they did make it and it was kind of interesting. The Mabel scene was great and I, I feel really lucky that I was able to be here and be a musician you know, at the height of what was the Mabel scene. And of course, you know, there are other scenes that built up in other, you know, in other parts of town or in other clubs. But when you look, you know, like the late 80s to early 90s, -ish, or sorry, mid 80s to early 90s, which is when Otis and the Elevators was active. Um, you know, hey, Mabel's was really big. There was a great scene going on there. Um, tons, tons of national bands came through and played there. Uh, you know, I saw Uncle Tupelo there. Uh, we opened for Jason and the Scorchers one time. Um, you know, Johnny Winter played there. Bo Diddley played. You know, the list just, I'm sure, goes on and on and on. I used to play at Mabel's in particular. That was kind of the the focal point of the scene, at least in the years that I lived here. Uh, they that seemed to be a club that had you know a lot of international acts. I mean, certainly uh, acts from all over the United States. Um, and they would have like a, every Wednesday night, I think they had a jam session and I would go and jump into that. And there was just a lot of things. They had Halloween contest. I won it one year. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so. What were you? 
I was all three Marx Brothers. I, I had someone sew a styrofoam head into this shoulder, one into this shoulder. I was Groucho in between. I had Harpo's horn over here and Chico, and I had the cigar, you know, and I looked like three Marx Brothers. It was kind of fun. The Red Lion Inn was, was great, and I used to sneak in there underage and uh, see all these just great bands. I used to see the Rave every time I could. They were, I loved them, and their music was great, and the show was, was great and hilarious. Uh, and, uh, you know, when Star Castle would play in town, it was amazing to get to see them. That was a great venue for just, you know, people would just go there no matter who was playing. And uh, it was a scene, you know, it was a place where everybody just went to be. Uh, and so Red Lion Inn was, was a great place. And that was one of the earlier rock and roll clubs actually in the country. I think they started in 65 or 66. I would say that the... The Red Lion was probably the hot spot for us. Uh, you know, at that time, you know, the Red Lion was was the place to be. You know, later on, Mabel's kind of like came about, but uh, I, I'd say for the most part, the Red Lion was the hot spot. The Red Lion was it. That was the you know that was the pinnacle of, of gigs in Champagne. There was the chances are too, but, yeah. the, but after a while, Red Lion became it. I mean, that's, it was that's coming up here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, before we get that Chances bridge. are it was yeah. almost a little more formal thing. Like you could right. play there, but it was, uh, you know, they didn't get really rowdy and sit down and watch you like it was a concert. Right. Yeah, it Red would, Lion was a concert. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. It was, there it was, was nobody dancing when we played. Yeah. You still got the uh, Cowboy Monkey, you know, downtown here, the High Dive, uh, the Mike and Molly's, uh, the Canopy Club. Uh, Memphis on Main, places like that, Bentleys, I mean even the smaller places are starting to have a lot of live music and then the bigger places that can bring in national acts, you know, and so yeah, there's still people out there that want to see that, you know, and people have to, people, you have to realize if you really are into that, you've got to come out and support these shows because that's the only way the club owners can bring them in. You know, these guys can't, can't go around and play all over the world for free. You know, it costs a lot of money to go up and down the highway. Um, so people that like live music are, you know, have got to come out and support it. You know, to, so that it'll, it'll keep keep growing. You know, keep going.